So in this video, we're going to talk about gases, specifically pressure. And the learning competency is to define pressure and give the common units of pressure. Okay, let's start. Give it to me now! So gases are everywhere. It's in the air, which supplies us with the gases we breathe. It's in the kitchen, like the LPG, right? So it is used for heating or cooking. It's in the hospital. So the gases we used to aid breathing of patients. We also use gas in automobiles. So gases are burned in order to make the cars move. And lastly, it's in the carbonated soda. So there's a gas called carbon dioxide makes the drink refreshing. Mm, very good. One concept that you need to know when dealing with gases is the pressure okay pressure is the amount of force exerted per unit area so the pressure of a gas is the force that the gas exerts on the wall of its containers when you blow air into a balloon the balloon expands because the pressure of air molecules is greater on the inside of the balloon than the outside that's why it expands okay so pressure is a property which determines the direction in which mass flows. So likewise, if the balloon is released, the air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Okay, now, one common example when dealing with pressure is pumping a tire. So for those who have cars, you'll understand. I do not want to comment. So the question is, what will happen if the pressure is much lower than what it should be? Next, what will happen if the pressure is much greater than what it should be? Now, if the pressure is too high, the tire touches the ground less, okay? Meaning, the car will bounce around the road. And when your tires are bouncing instead of firmly planted on the root, the traction suffers and so do your stopping distances. Okay, so traction is the grip of the tire, right? So you have discomfort in driving. Now, if the pressure is too low, there's too much of the tire surface area touching the ground. And when the tire touches the ground more often, it increases the friction between the road and the tire. And what happens when there's more friction? It could overheat, okay? At the same time, the tire will be destroyed easily. Lastly, it can lead to tread separation and an accident. Okay? Now let's discuss the units of pressure. Okay, so an old air pump in a gasoline station used the unit pound per square inch or PSI. This is widely used, especially in the United States, but its usage is supposedly discouraged. Ooh, why did that one? Ooh. Next, a new air pump used kilopascal, KPA, or Newton per square meter. Okay, so remember in physics, right? Which is the SI unit for pressure. Next, in chemistry, a widely used unit for pressure is the atmosphere. But the IUPAC, or the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, discourages its usage. But atmosphere is very common. It's widely used. So it's hard to deviate from that. Is that true? It's very true. And lastly, TOR or MMHG. They're the same. So it's an old but popular unit of pressure. So again, the UPAC doesn't want to use this anymore. Now, let's talk about this guy. Because it's the only picture of a human here. Okay, this guy is Evangelista Torricelli. So who is Evangelista Torricelli? In 1646, Torricelli described an experiment in which a glass tube about a meter long was sealed at one end, filled with mercury, and then inverted into a dish filled with mercury. Okay, so it's like this. He found out that some but not all of the mercury drained out of the glass tube into the dish. Okay, 
So Torricelli explained this by assuming that mercury drains from the glass tube until the force of the column of mercury pushing down on the inside of the tube exactly balances the force of the atmosphere pushing down on the surface of the liquid outside the tube. So meaning the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of mercury are equal. Going back to the units, there are relationships between them. Okay? So we say that one atmosphere is equal to 760 tor or millimeter mercury and one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascal. Okay? So we're not going to discuss how to convert because we have another video for that. So if you want to practice conversion, please view this video. Okay? Do it! Just do it! Aside from pressure, there are other parameters used to describe gases. So one of them is volume and the other is temperature. Okay, so let's talk about volume first. So the common unit for volume is liters, right? So you can see them in Coke, in soda. You have 0.25 liters, 0.33, 2.0 liters of Coke. Not the Coke, you know what I mean. It's Coca-Cola. Oh, that? Yes, people are thinking, Really, oh, that? Oh, you, are you serious? And the SI unit is cubic meter. Now, liters can be converted into another unit. So we have the equivalence. So one liter is equal to 1,000 cubic meter. One liter is equal to one cubic decimeter. One ml is equal to one cubic centimeter. For example, let's convert 5,000 cubic meter to liters. And we know that one cubic meter is equal to 1,000 liter. So where did it come from? So it's from here, right? So just manipulate the data. So again, we're going to use the dimensional analysis so that we'll be organized. If you don't know the dimensional analysis, we have videos for that. So just check them out. And in dimensional analysis, we start with a given and we write it to the upper left. Then we use the conversion factor. Since we want to eliminate cubic meter, it should be in the bottom. And since we want to get the liters, 1000 liters is in the top. So look how the units cancel. Boom. Then just multiply these two you will get 5 million liters. Now let's go to temperature. The common unit for temperature is Celsius, right? So we say 0 degrees Celsius. We say 25 degrees Celsius. But the SI unit is Kelvin. By the way, we don't say degree Kelvin, okay? It's just Kelvin. Okay. The temperature that we're going to use in the next videos should be in Kelvin. Okay, remember this, please. And the other unit is Fahrenheit, degree Fahrenheit. So this is not commonly used, but I'm just going to show you how to deal with this. Okay, this is the formula in converting temperature to other units. So we have Celsius to Kelvin, Kelvin to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, so the two most common are this one. So please memorize them. When you're looking for temperature in Kelvin, you just have to get the temperature in Celsius plus 273. Some books, they use 273.15. Okay. So in the next videos, and some of the videos, I'm going to use 273.15 just to deal with the significant figures, okay? If you're given Kelvin and you want to solve for Celsius, the formula is the same, but this time it's minus, okay? So where did it come from? Transfer this to the other side and you'll get negative. That's why we have this, okay? So let's have an example. Let's convert 345 Kelvin to Celsius. 
So we're going to use this formula since we're looking for Celsius. So 345 minus 273, this will give us 72 degrees Celsius. Okay, don't forget the degree. Okay, it's very simple. It's just a review, actually. Now we can use the pressure, temperature, and volume to describe the physical properties of gases. So when we use this, we will have the gas loss. Okay? So there's another video for the gas loss. So we have the Boyle's combined gas loss, Avogadro's gas law, ideal gas law, Charles law, and partial pressure. So you can just check them out. Okay? So the gas laws are used to describe, again, the physical properties of gases because they are somehow similar. Unlike their chemical properties, it varies so much. Okay, so now we have this thing called atmospheric pressure. It's the mass of the gases in the atmosphere pressing on the surface of the Earth. A one square meter column of air extending from the Earth's surface through the atmosphere has a mass of about 10,300 kilograms, producing a pressure of 101,000 pascal or 101 kilopascal at the surface. So where did it come from? So we know that pressure is equal to force over the area, right? And force can be derived from mass times acceleration. Putting all the numbers together, we will have this. And 101 kPa is the standard pressure, okay? So when we say that the gas is at standard pressure, or STP, which stands for standard temperature and pressure, the value or the pressure is 101. Okay? So how do we measure gas pressure? So gas pressure is measured with a barometer, right? Which consists of a long tube, which is sealed at one end and filled with mercury. So if you remember Evangelista Torricelli, that's right. So Evangelista Torricelli is actually the one pioneered the barometer. Some mercury runs out of the tube until the downward pressure of the mercury in the column is balanced by the atmospheric pressure on the mercury in the dish. Okay, so at sea level and 0 degrees Celsius, a column of mercury is 760 millimeter tall. And at the top of Mount Everest, a column of mercury is 270 millimeter tall. Now, another way in measuring pressure is by using manometer. This is what a manometer looks like. Okay. So, uh, so, uh,